That is a narrow. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. <laughs> Getting the Ampera out of the, the gates, and the first thing I notice is a brake. There's a lot more travel, it seems, in the brake pedal. And it is a wide car. I can't see the edge of the bonnet, even if I put my head high. This is the 14th of July and just arrives at Schiphol Airport and driving a production Ampera. I mean, this differs from the prototype model that we drove at Mulbrook in May with this detailing on the inserts here. You've got loads of different displays here to absorb and a lot to di digest. Sat and have of course we've got a touch screen here. We've got a lot of information on here with our battery charge and range. Our objective is to try to keep the green ball in the middle to drive at the maximum efficiency. But one thing that I'm conscious of is keeping the car between the white lines. It is very smooth. Apparently, it's 270 newton per meter, which is the equivalent of a three litre diesel. What are your impressions of the car just then? Yeah, really good, really smooth, very really nice. Yeah, yeah, enjoying it. It's the first time I spent some time in it actually, so uh, yeah, really impressed. It's for comfort, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything's very dense. So, there's no way you'll get a fifth person, it's because of the, the tunnel here where the batteries are. Which is a shame, because that would limit its appeal with what looks like a pouch, because the prototype version that we saw last May had a big gap between, and they've broken it up with that kind of burgundy leather effect. Five door Astra. Of course, it's based on the same uh, chassis, which is the, the Delta chassis. And uh, for the, the drivers, amongst you, there is a drive mode button here. If you press it, you can then select either normal, which is what the car is in now, or sport, mountain, or hold, which will also be the power offerings from the, the battery. You've got traditional automatic ratios here, with the exception of this L, which is for the regenerative braking, so if I put it in L, it's lots of drag the car. Then power of battery units. Also can grant an eight year uh, or um, 100,000 miles warranty um, on the battery, and this is not uh, this is not uh, the lifetime uh, of the of the vehicle. This is the warranty, so we expect, of course, uh, the battery to last much longer. They are wired in series in a row here, um, providing six, uh, 360 volts of operating voltage. It is a T-shaped battery. It weighs uh, about 430 pounds. In here, there you can see it's small and narrow. Right, so that's the electric drive. So that's the main electric drive, that would be the control system. That's the, that's the electric motor, that's the generator in there. So it's hard to see it because it's sawn in half. That's the spinny round bit there, and then that's the motor. So, generator. Yeah. I, mean, that also, I didn't realise that, that also works as a motor for well, the generator, does, because they're basically the same. But it is a bit more shallow. Right, so beneath there's no spare wheel, but there is a uh, pump and so on, as you'd expect in most new cars now. Is 
Monster on the UK early next year, of course, for the Fox 4 badge. Now here's a display, here is the range on the range extender, which is using the engine. We've depleted the uh, battery range there. And uh, my overall impression of this car, it does what Vauxhall say it will do, and it has been proved. Ranges do tally, but I just feel a bit numb. Everything is damp and very serene and smooth. But uh, for the drivers and it's due, I wouldn't choose this car. But I think it will be a winner because it's unique. But is it a compromise?